The NES and the SNES are two of the greatest video game platforms of all time. Some of the most iconic and legendary games ever were created on these two systems, from platformers to epic RPGs. Many games managed to stand the test of time on these platforms, and companies are always looking for new ways to bring back the classic games. The NES and SNES Classic from Nintendo have caused a resurgence in interest in both of these platforms, allowing for an easy way to plug in and play some of the classics from this era. Well, pending you can find one, because you know how Nintendo likes to make things a bit scarce at times. Come on Nintendo, keep up with the demand already. If you're a cart owner who is open-minded towards clone hardware like I am though, there's a new alternative coming, the Classic 2 from Old School. Hitting online retailers like Amazon and Walmart, along with their own website this November, the Classic 2 will retail for $69.99 and will allow you to play your old carts on your HDTV. Or, if you prefer, you can also play them via AV cable on your CRT TV. Let's take a look at this device and see what comes inside the box. So inside the box you have the Classic 2 here. I really like this finish. It comes in two different colors. It comes in a black as well, but the purple of course is what's good for me. Uh, you have four controller ports there, two NES, two SNES, your toggle switch when you choose which device you are playing on, and then your cartridge slots. Now taking a look at the back of the unit, there's some good stuff on here. You have the aspect ratio button switch, excuse me, so that you can switch it between 16x9 and 4x3, HD, AV out, and there's also a switch on the bottom for PAL or NTSC cartridges. So, so far so good. I really like how it looks. It comes with two different controllers. It comes with a Super Nintendo style controller that feels really good honestly. It feels pretty much like a stock Super Nintendo controller and it also comes with a dog bone controller for the NES games. Now you can use the Super Nintendo controller for all the games. You can also use your original controllers as well. Now none of this matters if it doesn't play the games well though so let's check it out and see how that performs. So up first, we're going to check out some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 on the NES. Kind of worked, right? Uh, this is a very underrated game in my opinion. There seems to be a lot of people that don't like this version of the game. And yeah, it's not nearly as good as the arcade version, but for an NES side-scrolling beat-em-up, I think it's pretty fun, and as you can see, it's playing very well on the Classic 2. I decided to use just the Super Nintendo controller for all of these games because, I don't know, it just seemed easier for me, and uh, there's no input lag that I noticed. Everything is very responsive, and everything looks and pretty much sounds like it should. So, so far, we are off to a very good start with this system. Now, if you're not familiar with Turtles 2, it is a great game. It's definitely a cheap game to pick up on the NES. This and Turtles 3 are very fun beat-em-ups. Um, I would avoid Turtles 1 though. It has a little nostalgia, but yeah, I don't really care for it. But yeah, Turtles 2 is running great. Now let's look at something that will test the hardware a little bit more. Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. Now, Castlevania 3 has been known to have trouble with some clone systems because it is one of the more advanced NES games that were created. But as you can see, everything is looking in tip-top shape on the Classic 2, which is very impressive. Uh, once again, one of my favorite NES games of all time. Just an amazing side-scrolling game. So much fun to play. Uh, multiple characters, multiple pads, a lot of stuff to do. And I'm very happy that it's running well on the Classic 2 because like I said, some of these clone consoles do struggle with this. There could be audio glitches, there could be graphical glitches, there could be Medusa heads hitting you and knocking you back. I hate Medusa heads. But I love Castlevania 3 and I'm glad to see that it's performing well on the system. Now I want to check out some Super Nintendo stuff though because I'm just in that sort of mood. And first up, we're going to check out a little Final Fight action, one of my favorite 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up games ever. Yes, it's not as good as the arcade version, but it's still a lot of fun, and it's running very good on this platform, the Classic 2 from Old School as well. And who doesn't love Hagar? Like, imagine you're out on the street, and you see some guy, just some huge buff guy with suspenders, with no shirt on, just beating the crap out of people, hitting people with German suplexes and drop kicks in the middle of the street. Like, like, that would be the most insane thing ever. But Hagar does that. This is this is Hagar's life. Like he wakes up in the morning and this is what he prepares to do. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about, but Final Fight's running great on the system. So let's check out a game that will give it a little bit more of a hardware push. Hint, hint, wink, wink. 
and that is of course Doom. Now this is a Super FX chip game, and once again, some of these clone consoles for the Super Nintendo do not play these Super FX chip games, but it appears that Doom is working in tip-top shape. Now, yes, while this is a hardware pusher for the Super Nintendo, which I mentioned in my hardware pushers episode, it is definitely not a great game, but it's still amazing to see a first-person shooter running on the Super Nintendo. And yes, it has that postage stamp size screen. And it's funny though, because this is only one of two a home console Doom games that hit a Nintendo platform, this and Doom 64. Thankfully the Switch version is coming up, hopefully it looks a little bit better than this. But yeah, Doom is very playable on the Super Nintendo as long as you can get past the graphics, and it is running fine on this, which means that Super FX chip games will work on this platform. So, so far so good. Now we're going to have to take a look at a game that you probably predicted there's going to be a version in this video if you've ever watched my videos, and that is of course, some Street Fighter. We have to have some Street Fighter. And we're playing Street Fighter Alpha 2 because I think it's one of the better looking fighting games on the platform. Yes, there's loading times, but I feel the animation is very smooth and I really like the character models and whatnot. And once again, this is definitely a hardware pusher on the platform for the Super Nintendo. Make sure you check out that hardware pushers episode. I felt it was a really fun episode. But you can see the game is running nice and smooth. Guy is trying to beat me. We know he's not going to beat me. I don't know why Guy even tries. But you could see uh, someone in the background there giving a little headlock. Could that be our friend Hagar? Hmm? What are you doing there, buddy? Can he just not leave people alone? Does he just have to go all over the place and fight everyone on every street? Like, I feel like I'm going to get mugged by Hagar very soon, and I don't know how I feel about that. But Street Fighter Alpha 2 is running great on this console, and now I want to take a look at some homebrew games and some reproduction games, because I think that's an important aspect to look at as well. Up first, we are taking a look at Haunted Halloween 85. Uh, I own Haunted Halloween 85 and 86. I think 86 is a more refined game, but I still have fun with 85, and I really just wanted to see if this would run on the platform, because I've been told that a lot of the NES clones that I've been reviewing don't seem to run this game for whatever reason, which is pretty strange, but you can see the Classic 2 is having no issues running the game. The game is running perfectly fine, and this is a highly recommended series, honestly. Honestly, uh, I really enjoy these games. They are super fun. The developer is very talented. And yeah, I'm very happy to see it running with no issues. Uh, if you like, you know, old school beat em up games with pop culture references from that time frame, the Haunted Halloween series is definitely one that you should check out because they're super fun beat em up games. Um, and beat em up games are some of the best on the system because they're 2D and it's easy to do 2D games. Now next up we're going to look at one of these multi cards that have 150 games in one. And the fact that it starts up is a good sign. Uh, let's look at some of the games that are on here. I've actually reviewed this multi cart and looked at a bunch of the different games on here. A really solid multi cart. There's a lot of great stuff on here. You could pick it up off of AliExpress or eBay, wherever. Uh, I always like to go to this game though because it's such an interesting thing to see a one-on-one -on -one 2D fighter on the NES. And Tournament Fighters, it's not a great game. It's an expensive NES game, but for what it is, it's actually pretty fun, I feel. You know, you're definitely limited due to the two-button control scheme of the NES, but all in all, like, it's a fun game. It, it's very serviceable if you're looking just for, you know, an easy fighting game to get into. Uh, I think it's a really fun game, and it's running well on the platform, so the multi-cards do work. That is another positive with the Classic 2. I'm very glad to see it's playing pretty much everything I've thrown at it. Now the final game I want to look at is a reproduction game of a Super Nintendo game that never released in North America and I I do not know why. If you watch the Angry Video Game Nerd episode on this game, you would be dumbfounded, especially if you're a fan of Back to the Future like I am. It's one of my favorite tr movie trilogies of all time and the games just sucked. Like the Telltale game that we got, you know, recently was good, but the games that came out back in the day were just so bad, whether you were playing on the NES or the Genesis, and then it's just like, oh, 
oh yeah, by the way, there's this one that came out, you know, only in Japan that's like actually super good. This is a translated version of the game that I picked up at a con recently, and just a super fun game. I highly recommend that if you are a fan of Back to the Future, you pick up this game, or if you're just a fan of 2D side-scrolling platforming games, you pick it up. It's very fun. It's very true to the source material. The music is great. There is some graphical slowdown here and there, but hey, we have to mention this. The Classic 2 has literally played everything I've thrown at it, and that's pretty damn impressive. So all in all, I'm very pleased with the Classic 2. I think it's a phenomenal system for 70 bucks. It's playing every cartridge I throw at it with no issues, no input lag, and it seems to be a very well-built system. So yeah, it's getting my thumbs up, stamp of approval. I'm very pleased with this system. I had no issues with it. So make sure you guys check it out when it releases in November, and thank you for checking out this video. I will catch you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed this review. Take it easy.